Hi guys, it's Dr. Sayed here, AKA Real Skin Doctor. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of the hottest topics in not only skincare, but the world of medicine as a whole. I am of course talking about the one, the only CBD. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what CBD is, the use of CBD in medicine as a whole, the use of CBD in skincare, the potential downsides to using CBD, and then finally, whether or not I recommend CBD use in your skincare routine. So it feels like you can't throw a shoe these days without hitting some kind of vendor or brand that wants to package and sell CBD to you in some variety. You can eat CBD as a gummy bear or as some kind of chocolate. You can drink it in a soft drink or even in your coffee. You can vape it, you can inhale it, you can rub it on your skin, of course, which is why we're talking about it. You can even use it as a suppository. All right, I made that last one up, but you didn't know if I was joking or not. To be honest, I don't even know if I was joking. Maybe there is a suppository. So this begs the question, what is CBD? CBD stands for cannabidiol. It is one of the main active ingredients in cannabis, AKA marijuana, AKA weed, AKA hash, AKA Mary Jane, AKA the sticky icky. One of my personal favorites, the bobo bush. Jolly Green, Broccoli, wait, where was I? Oh yeah, so CBD is one of the main active ingredients in marijuana. It does not give you the high that is commonly associated with the drug. And that's because marijuana has a ton of different ingredients in it. And the one that gives you that high is actually called THC. THC as a side note stands for tetrahydrocannabinol. But if you're looking for more information about THC, then I am not your guy. So where does CBD come from? There are a couple of different options. Uh, CBD can be taken from different species of marijuana plants that have a very low percentage of THC in them. In order to legally count as CBD, there are actually has to be less than 0.3% THC as part of any marijuana plant. Another name for some of these marijuana plants where the THC content is really low is hemp. So to recap, CBD is one of the chemicals that's part of a marijuana plant, but it is not the psychoactive part, which is known as THC. Marijuana plants that have a really low THC content are also known as hemp, and it is hemp farming that has provided the majority of the CBD that we find in the market today. So the FDA states that CBD causes no intoxication or euphoria, and the World Health Organization also confirms that there is no addiction potential or abuse potential that has been found in CBD use. So tell your parents they can relax if you are using a CBD product. CBD has become increasingly popular in the last couple of years with a year on year growth of close to 1000% in certain estimates. So why is it that all of a sudden we're seeing CBD in absolutely everything? Believe it or not, one of the main reasons why we've seen such a surge in popularity of CBD based products is actually because of Donald Trump. And no, that's not because he's stressed everyone out so much that they've decided to turn to CBD, even though that was a good theory. It's actually because his administration in 2018 passed a bill known as the Farm Bill. At this point, you're probably wondering why a skincare channel is going into politics and telling you about legislation that's been passed. No, you have not accidentally tuned into the C-SPAN YouTube channel. I just think this bit is relevant because uh, with the passage of the Farm Bill in 2018, the Trump administration actually made it legal for farmers to begin to grow and cultivate and sell hemp-based products. Prior to this point in 2018, hemp was actually one of the controlled substances. And so not a lot of farmers would dedicate the time and effort needed to focus on hemp as one of their main products. Since 2018, hemp really has been taken off its leash with farmers realizing just how profitable an industry hemp-based CBD can be. Now we are bombarded with adverts on the internet, in our podcasts, on our TV channels, telling us about CBD and the potential benefits that it could bring. We're told that it can help with sleep, anxiety, depression, muscle pains, menstrual cramps, headaches, appetite simulation. For the sake of this video and my channel specifically, we're also being told about how CBD can help with a bunch of different skin diseases, from acne and eczema, to psoriasis, to wrinkle reduction. But are any of these claims really credible? Let's start by speaking broadly about CBD use in healthcare and then focusing in on the skin. When it comes to all of these potential medical uses of CBD that we hear about in all of these adverts, we might be forgiven for thinking that this is a very well studied and very well understood molecule. But the truth is we actually have very little understanding of how CBD has any effect on the human body. We know there are, for example, CB1 and CB2 receptors within the human body. THC exerts a lot of its effects by acting upon the CB1 receptor and people had hypotheses about the fact that maybe CBD exerts most of its effect by focusing on the CB2 receptor. But there's actually very little research to show that that is where CBD has its effects. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have an effect, we just don't know exactly how it does. So what do we know? Are there any medical conditions out there that we can say with some certainty that we think CBD is effective for? With all of the hype that you may have heard and all of these different claims that you've come across, there is actually only one medical indication for which CBD has received an FDA approval for. The FDA, or the Food and 
Drug Administration is the government entity that is responsible for giving approvals for medication once they have proven themselves to be effective. The bar that is set by the FDA in order for something to be considered FDA approved is fairly high. It requires that a product is compared to alternatives and to placebos and that that product in a controlled setting can prove that it is able to have an effect on the disease that is being studied. As of now, CBD has only managed to reach that threshold of evidence for one clinical indication. That is in certain very rare childhood seizure disorders. Epidiolex is a medication that is based on CBD, which was studied in three randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trials. So what does the randomized part of this mean? It means that as patients were recruited to this trial, they were designated to go into either the Epidiolex group or the placebo group completely at random. The idea behind this is that that means there were no biases when it comes to maybe very sick people being put into the placebo group and only the slightly unwell people being put into the Epidiolex group so that it might make Epidiolex look like it's more effective when in reality there were differences in the baseline characteristics between the two groups. So the whole idea behind randomizing people in these high quality studies is that you want the two groups to be fairly similar. The double blinded part means that neither the patients in the study nor the investigators who were observing and recording the results of the study were aware which group was actually getting the active ingredient of the CBD based Epidiolex and which of them was receiving the placebo. And then finally, placebo controlled means that each of the groups was given some type of tablet that looked exactly the same. The thinking behind this is that you can try to stop there being what's known as a placebo effect, where people just feel like they're getting better because they're taking some kind of tablet, even if it does not have an active ingredient. These three studies together had a pool of around about 500 patients. All of these patients were children who had some of these rare seizure disorders. When the results of these studies were put together, the data showed that the group that were given that both the anti-seizure medications as as well as the additional CBD based product actually had a reduced frequency of seizures. So that is some proof that the body definitely does have these CBD receptors within it and that we can have an effect on these receptors if we dose people with the right amount of CBD. Now bear in mind that the doses that were used in these studies are extremely high, far more than what you can get from one of those gummy bears that you can buy online. All of that being said, it is very promising that we have high quality evidence-based studies that prove CBD can have a very good therapeutic effect in one condition. But what about CBD use for sleep and anxiety? That's what we normally see it marketed for. And that is where the majority of the profits from the CBD industry come from. As of now, CBD has not proven in high quality evidence to cause any effect on anxiety or even in helping people to sleep. Once again, before you guys come at me in the comment section telling me I'm an idiot and that it's changed your lives, I am not saying that CBD does not have any effect on any of these things. All I'm saying is if you wanna know where the medical community as a whole stands, Right now, we cannot tell you that CBD has been proven to be effective for those other indications. And any company that tells you otherwise likely has a profit incentive for wanting to do so. There is more and more research going into CBD because it is such a hot topic right now. So this video might end up being outdated very soon. We might find new trials that have proven the effect of CBD in a lot of these other conditions. And if that does happen, I will be the first to let you know. So subscribe below. What you have to bear in mind is that the placebo effect is a strong, strong factor not only when it comes to CBD use, but even in a lot of the clinical trials that we see. It is completely normal when we carry out these trials to find that even in the placebo group of a really high quality study, where we're testing a very expensive medication, a group that is given just an injection of water, for example, rather than a very expensive biologic medication, ends up seeing a genuine improvement when it comes to their symptoms. That's not because these people are lying, it's because to some extent there really is a mind over matter component when it comes to a lot of our medical symptoms. So if you really believe that having those two CBD gummies in the evening gives you a really nice and mellow night, chances are you have made that a reality by believing it to be so. So all power to you, that means you have got the effect that you wanted. I'm only here to tell you guys what the medical evidence for it shows and to let you guys make up your own minds otherwise. But enough about the inside of the body. You guys aren't here for the real doctor, you're here for the real skin doctor. So what about the CBD use in skincare? That is the million if not billion dollar question when it comes to the skincare industry. The most definitive and truthful answer to that question is... We don't know. But give me a chance to explain myself. As I mentioned earlier, there are CBD receptors present in a couple of the different types of cells that we have within our skin. There are high quality studies published in very respectable medical journals, such as the one I'm showing on screen right now, 
that have proven the use of CBD at the right concentrations can cause the oil producing cells in the skin to either make more or less oil. And that could be very useful for conditions such as acne where there's typically an overproduction of this oil. This study also shows that by putting CBD onto certain types of skin cells, you can reduce the amount of inflammation that is present in the skin. So what's the problem then? I just told you guys that there's a study out there proving that CBD can reduce the amount of oil in your skin and it can reduce inflammation in your skin. That's it, it's a miracle, right? Wait right there before you dunk your entire head into that tub of CBD oil. The study that I mentioned, as well as a whole host of other studies that have looked into the effects of CBD on different skin cells, have always done this in what is known as an in vitro setting. In vitro means that the test was carried out on very controlled skin cells that exist outside of the human body. Imagine it being in a kind of test tube. This is in contrast to in vivo studies, where the test is carried out on skin cells as they exist in the real human body. But come on, Dr. Saeed, you're just being a hater now. If we know that it works on these skin cells in a test tube, then obviously it works in the human body. We just find it harder to measure, right? Wrong. There are countless medications that have shown really promising results when they're tested outside of the human body in one of these controlled test tube environments. The vast majority of these discoveries end up failing spectacularly when you actually test them out on living human tissue. The body is a complex symphony of instruments. There's the blood that is coursing through every part. There's the immune system that is alive and is unique to every single one of us, depending on what we've been exposed to throughout our lives. And there are different genes which turn on and off depending on signals that they receive from the surrounding cells. Something working by itself in a test tube in a controlled setting is like one guy playing a guitar solo in a soundproof box you really have no idea whether or not it's gonna work as part of a whole until you put it out there. So no, we can't just assume that CBD, based on these promising test tube results, will definitely have these benefits when it comes to real human skin. One of the main differences between the skin that exists on our bodies and the skin cells upon which these tests are based is the fact that we have an additional layer known as the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is the outermost layer of our skin, so the one that I'm stroking right now. It presents one of the main obstacles to any type of medication or external force that's trying to get into our skin and therefore into our body. It has a structure that's commonly referred to as the bricks and mortar. The bricks part of this analogy are made up of the protein skeletons of dead skin cells. The mortar, which exists between these different layers of bricks, is made up of a combination of different types of fats which exist within our skin. It may not sound like much, but the stratum corneum is the kind of formidable wall that brings a tear to Donald Trump's eye. The stratum corneum is not only very tightly packed, making it hard for large molecules to physically pass through, it also has different regions that either repel fat-soluble molecules or they repel water-soluble molecules. A molecule has to be the perfect balance between being friendly with fat and being friendly with water to be able to find its own channel to get its way through the skin. When they carry out studies on the different kinds of skin cells in the test tube, they don't tend to have a stratum corneum playing any kind of part in the studies because they don't wanna make their job any more difficult. What they wanna do is see whether or not this molecule, in theory, if it could pass through all of these layers, or would have a good effect on these cells. So we truthfully do not know whether any of these CBD-based creams and products have gone through the type of testing required to prove that they have an effect. There is only a minuscule amount of research out there right now that has been done on a CBD product on real human skin that has been shown to have anything like convincing results when it comes to its efficacy. In conclusion, when it comes to the skin section, yes, different skin cells do seem to have some type of receptor that responds to CBD. Yes, CBD used in the right concentrations in certain test tube environments on skin cells has shown to reduce the amount of oil produced by the skin. But no, we do not know convincingly that any CBD based product out there genuinely has an indication for the skin diseases that we're familiar with. The product would have to have the perfect concentration of CBD to promote the kind of response we want. It would also have to prove that it can pass through that barrier that we talked about known as the stratum corneum and actually get down to the level of the cells that we're trying to have an effect on. It is a very exciting area of work and one that that I welcome with open arms. So I really do hope that there is more high quality investigation done into this area. And as soon as there is that research out there, I can promise you guys that I will bring you the updates. So we may not have conclusive proof that CBD based products do work, but based on the small possibility that they could, 
What's the harm in us using them anyway? That's a fair point. CBD is an extremely safe molecule, whether it's applied to your skin or whether it's ingested in any form. The National Institute for Health has shown that even taking doses as high as 1500 milligrams, so that's like probably three packs of gummy bears, each day for up to four weeks has had no noticeable side effects. That's not to say that I endorse you guys doing that. I'm just telling you that CBD seems to be an extremely safe compound. However, there are documented reports of CBD use causing fatigue, irritability, even the liver enzymes in your body to be increasing. There are also documented side effects when it comes to putting CBD on your skin with people reporting irritation and allergic reactions. But it's tough to tell whether that's because of the CBD itself or more likely it's because of the combination of different chemicals that have been used to make a cream feel like a cream. I want you guys to also be aware that taking CBD by mouth can actually cause you to fail a drug test in very rare instances. The CBD market right now is almost completely unregulated in the majority of states. And what that means is even if you think you're getting a certain CBD product with a certain purity and at the right milligram dose, the reality is the thing that you are ingesting might be very different to what you expect. The study I'm showing you guys on the screen right now was carried out at the University of Pennsylvania and it proved this exact fact. It also showed that in a certain percentage of cases of CBD only products, there was a fairly significant amount of THC. That THC might not be enough to give you a high when you ingest the gummy bear or the oil, for example, but it could reach the threshold where it's actually able to be picked up in your urine and therefore you could fail a drug screen. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. It's not likely to happen if you're putting it on your skin, but it's good to know. Moving on to the other two downsides I see from the use of CBD. The first of those is the fact that you could be wasting money, honestly. These CBD products are fairly expensive, the majority of them. So why waste your money on something when you don't have a clear evidence base that it's gonna be effective? And the bigger downside I can see is that for the vast majority of skin conditions that I see on a daily basis, we have a number of different products that are available which have such higher qualities of evidence proving them to be effective. If you're using a CBD cream to treat your acne, the chances are you're not coming to see me in my office and you're not getting one of my prescribed solutions to your acne. The vast majority of skin conditions that I see on a daily basis, whether that's acne, whether that's eczema, whether that's psoriasis or rosacea, we have really excellent prescription strength medications that can give people incredible results. I see it on a daily basis and just because you've tried one or two of the treatment options and not necessarily got the response you were hoping for does not mean that you have to turn to an all natural hemp based alternative. The majority of medications that we prescribe on a daily basis have reached that threshold where the FDA has stated, okay, fine, these things really do work. So by focusing on these CBD based alternatives that you just use for yourself at home that aren't regulated and that you don't really know what they contain, chances are you are delaying yourself a type of treatment that is proven to be potentially more effective for you. So in conclusion, do I recommend that people start to use CBD-based products in their skincare regimens? No, I don't. If you're someone that doesn't really have a debilitating skin condition and you wanna try adding CBD because you know, why not? If you can fit it in with your budget, if it's not giving you an irritation or any kind of reaction, there really is very little harm to trying a CBD-based product. But if you're someone who's trying to save up money to buy one of these luxury CBD brands, you have really bad skin disease and you are hoping that based on some of the advertising uh, you've seen that CBD is gonna be the cure for you my answer to you is don't do it wait until we have higher quality evidence wait until we can identify which exact product is really effective when we study it and in the meantime give us dermatologists another chance we have a lot of different things that we can offer you so i encourage you please see one of your licensed physicians and just tell them what you have tried and failed until such a point where you've exhausted the evidence-based solutions that we're convinced we have for you so that is the conclusion to this video about cbd use in skincare as always guys i would love it if you could like and subscribe to this video if you could share it with a friend that you think would find this interesting or if you could just comment your thoughts below have you guys used any cbd products that you swear have helped for you why don't you tell me about them below? I'd love to look into them in more detail. And in the future, I will definitely be doing some follow-up videos about this topic. Also, if you guys have any other requests about topics that you'd like me to cover, now is your chance to so just comment below, subscribe to the channel, and maybe I'll be choosing one of your topics to focus on in my next video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.